Well, I'm going to begin, Emily, by asking just how it sort of transpired you be you involved in this. Was it one that uh, John was working on and you said, oh, I'll give it a little proofread to see, you know, if yes. this is... And then you just went, oh, I like that character. That's pretty much exactly oh, how it went. Yeah, oh, he cool. pitched me the idea and I just had our second, second daughter. So I wasn't quite in the mindset of diving into a horror film. Um, and then he rewrote it and I read his version and then... Um, saw immediately that this was something I really um, would be sad to miss out on. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to sort of watching uh, yourself back on screen, what was it like watching a horror movie? Are you able to get scared by the jumps and, and, the, and the moments and the sounds? Or is that a bit difficult so when you know I it? I saw a couple of the earlier rough cuts, you know, where John was editing without any sound or anything like that. And so it's, it's quite a sort of scary moment because you're like, oh my God, we really need the sound to kind of feel this film. And then I saw it with 1,200 person audience in South by Southwest and I did absolutely jump a couple of times and I know what's going to happen and I think the sound design and the jump scares in this um, are so heightened as well when you watch it with that many people. So was it like being directed by your other half? I just spoke to John, he said it was an absolute Dude. nightmare working with you but, <laughs> but um, what, what, what was, was it? Was it was he, a nightmare. <laughs> but on, on set was he, was, was, did you have to make, was he, did he have to be the director and not the husband or do you actually think the sort of blending of the two was quite beneficial? Well to I the think project? the blending of the two was beneficial in that um, we do collaborate really well together. We have very similar aligned feelings about scenes and even when we watch movies we're very aligned about what we feel about moments in a film. Um, but I think, you know, he did try and afford me that sort of diplomacy that you would any other ac actress, I guess. And um, But he's also an actor so he gets it, he gets what it is, where you, the places you have to go to to do certain scenes and um, we were nervous about it and then realised quickly that we had no reason to be nervous about it. Because yeah, even though I suppose it's a really good thing when if you've obviously got that kind of pre-established bond with your co-stars, that's only ever going to be beneficial. At the same yeah. time, when you were sort of like op acting opposite him and say like looking into his eyes or anything, did, was it harder to see the character when you know the man so Do you know, well? I'll, be, I'll be honest, um, and not to sound actuary about it, but he is so not like the character that he plays in this. He is the opposite. And so often I would look at him with this like completely haunted expression the character has for most of the time. And, and, and he just didn't even quite look like himself to me. And one of the things that I'm just so fascinated by this is, is the removal of kind of sound. I think when you take it away in some ways, it makes it so much more prominent. I mean, yeah. when things go bump in the night in this, you really hear yeah, you it. You feel I mean, it. It's yeah. such a fascinating sort of approach to kind of take that device from the horror genre sure. and turn it on its head, isn't it? Well, I think you're just mm -hmm. magnifying it. And I think that sound becomes a uh, becomes like the bad guy in the in the film it's like you you're you're feeling stalked by the idea of making noise the whole time and i think in some ways the mistake is to call this a silent film it's so not it's so rich with sound you're just so aware of it you know you're more aware of the tiniest little creaks than e than ever before of course, one of the sort of big narrative uh, plots in this is obviously the fact that she's pregnant, which obviously is a great because sure. obviously childbirth isn't exactly quiet, and then it's not exactly young quiet. babies aren't quiet either. No. But what, 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 why did they have another baby? Whose bloody idea was that? Oh, I don't know. It's not. It might not have been planned. Mm. There's lots of. I think it's a complex thing why they decide to have another baby. I think it, it's not necessarily planned, but it's not unplanned. It's a way of dealing with grief. Mm. It's all of that. And uh, what was it like working with uh, with the kids? I mean, they're they're so they're great. All, they're in this. amazing. Because when yeah. you work with um, with other actors, I suppose there's always that thing where you say goodbye. You might give them a call or a text and see them yeah. on future projects. But I guess you form a closer bond with children. Oh, very that much must mean so. you miss them more when this it's all over. Yeah, it was it was really magical being with them, and we just thank the stars every night for them to be honest, because they're such pros and they're so talented, and they're just great people. So I, I do miss them still. And you've got some uh, really interesting ones coming up. Jungle Cruise. Yeah. I mean, so, so, so far, it's Dwayne Johnson, yourself, and Jack Whitehall. Yeah. So I don't know what to expect from that movie. So You're my question love it. is, what, what it's like romancing I the stone African Queen <laughs> meets Indiana Jones. It's awesome. Has it started? Is it, you, no, we start in May. Oh, right. Yeah. I can't wait for that one. And obviously, Good. I mean, there's Mary Poppins as well. Oh, I Who's mean, that? <laughs> it must be, it was, how great was it? And was it almost quite surreal when you were dressed up as, as Mary and you're performing as her? Because she's a, such a kind of, she's a cinematic icon. You know, she to, is. To play that role and so be... is Julie Andrews. And so in many ways, it was, um, you know, I, I think I just needed to make sure I didn't repeat the sort of like, you know, how, however brilliant Julie was, I just had to kind of do my own version of Mary Poppins. So she looks different, she dresses different, it's set 30 years after the originals, all new music, thank God, because I don't <laughs> sing like Julie Andrews. Um, so it was exciting, it's like the next chapter of her. 
Yeah. She's like a superhero, isn't she? Mary? She kind of, she's my superhero. Oh, this right. is my Marvel moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. Too much. Thank you. It. Thanks thank you. a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey. hey.